What's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to take a look at the Kubernetes objects that we are going to be diving deeper into over the next few videos. The things that actually make up our like running WordPress deployment. So I just want to get clear on a few of the basic objects. Um, and so I'm calling this thinking in Kubernetes because to kind of decompose a problem into something that is scriptable, automatable, definable in Kubernetes terms, these are the concepts that you'll need to know. So we're going to be looking at containers, pods, replica sets, services, secrets, config maps, deployments, daemon sets. Um, we're going to be covering eh, the daemon sets and jobs. Eh, I'll add it. I'll add it. But I can't promise a ton of depth because, well, maybe I'll add some of that at the end. Okay. Here's the kind of relationship. Here's how, here's how this is built up. Pods manage your actual containers. So you kind of say we want to run MySQL and WordPress. We package those up into a pod or multiple pods. And we'll get into what specifically pods are, but they're basically entities that might need to scale separately from each other. So they run containers. They're packaged up into replica sets, which kind of define, okay, I want, you know, three of these running at any time uh, and, you know, restart more uh, if one of them dies. Services are what actually expose the pods themselves, those, those like things that are running the containers to the outside world. As you saw before, this is usually mapping to something in whatever infrastructure you're running that actually creates some load balancer that exposes this thing. Config maps and secrets are things that we use to configure the containers running in our pods. So secrets, like you saw the MySQL root password, config maps is kind of more data, not necessarily secret, um, that's structured that you can uh, kind of pass into your containers as they're started, usually in the form of environment variables. Labels are the plumbing that kind of ties everything together in Kubernetes. It's how things are found. It's how um, how like your DigitalOcean load balancer knows what to run or what the service. That's how a label is how the service looks up what um, what it, pods it should actually be exposing. Um, we're not going to dive into that in detail because just a basic understanding of this is enough for the types of projects we're looking at. Obviously, if you're going to like professionally be running Kubernetes, it's something that you should dive into uh, beyond what we cover here. Finally, deployments are kind of the, the change management tool that you have. A deployment is how you roll all of this other stuff up that kind of builds into a deployment. Uh, your pods, your, the, your replica sets around those, the config maps and secrets, blah, blah, blah. And a deployment is how you manage changing from one set of those, say at one version of your application, to the next version. Uh, and a deployment manages, like, how do we do that? Do we have a canary? Do we, uh, you know, rip everything down and then bring up something new? Or do we slowly remove one and then add one of the new ones? Um, so it's that change management that you might be doing in a real setting. Um, there are also things like jobs and daemon sets, which are you can think of as basically background processes and cron jobs or tasks, uh, simple tasks, as opposed to long-running services. Uh, we will talk about those a little bit, but we won't use them extensively. So down to the kind of nitty-gritty, the objects that we're going to be working with are represented uh, either as JSON or YAML. You already saw one example in the WordPress MySQL secrets file. This is basically the simplest simplest one I can show you. Um, the kind here, so this is the kind of object it is for Kubernetes, and the kind is a secret. There's some metadata about that, uh, like you could also have labels and stuff in here. Uh, and then it has, you know, data. So secrets have data, and this is how you list it. Um, I have some examples in here. We'll talk in more detail about these when we talk about secrets and config maps. This could look a few different ways, uh, and you can use this in a few different ways. Um, but this is, at its simplest, just a YAML file that defines a secret object for Kubernetes. The way that you apply objects, uh, or changes to objects, um, you create this file. Now, there's another way to do that. You can, um, <laughs> you can edit it directly 
But what we've been doing and what we'll continue to do is we want everything represented as code. We're not making any like changes to a running system that don't get persisted on our disk. So this is sort of infrastructure as code style approach that I'm using here. Every change to the system should be tracked in like a Git repository uh, that your team is using. So what we're doing is editing these object files directly, like the secrets file, for example, and then applying that. We're basically applying the object defined in this YAML file to uh, the Kubernetes cluster via its API, right? We're using kubectl to apply that change. There's another way, which I don't like, which is editing those things directly, where basically um, you type this in, the Kubernetes API responds with the, the current like content, uh, you know, as, as a text stream of like what that file would look like. And then you edit it directly in whatever your, you know, uppercase editor is set to in your shell. And then, you know, it's stored as a temp file. And as soon as you save it, that's then re-uploaded or applied uh, back to your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I generally hate that because A, you're doing everything in the shell. Um, B, none of that state is actually kept in like your Git repository. Um, and it becomes a horrible kludge of, of lacking state management that makes your life hell and makes you quit your job. So in general, avoid that. Uh, do everything as files and delete and recreate or update objects as needed. You've seen me delete a few things as well. For example, that, uh, that WordPress pod that was running. I wanted to kill it and show you that, you know, the state survives because we have a storage volume mounted in. Well, the way that I did that was by deleting the pod. This is how you delete from an actual piece of YAML. You can also delete, um, like you saw me do, I wrote kubectl delete pod and then the pod ID. That works too. So if you're not doing it from a YAML file. Along with labels, there's a couple things that I'm not covering in detail here, which you would bump into in larger projects. Namespaces and contexts, I'm just mentioning them here, uh, also to explicitly say that I'm not covering them. So if that makes you sad, that's fine. You can you can go read up on this on your own time. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use it for the small example projects that we're, we're running through in this course. So I'm not using them. I want to keep the complication to a minimum. All right, so that being said, we're gonna start diving into these uh, in detail, starting with the thing which you have to understand, but you will never actually use directly, or it's unlikely that you'll use it directly, pods. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.